High Empire. During this period, the Roman Empire reached its greatest geographical extent and height of power. There was unprecedented prosperity for all who came under the Roman rule, which, as you know from looking at the map, it was quite extensive. Trajan was a general born in Spain who had commanded Roman troops in Germany, which was really important because that's where the barbarians lived. Although they say they were barbaric, they weren't really barbaric in the sense that they were barbarians that, you know, they had no couth at all. They just didn't know how to read and write, or there doesn't seem to be any sign that they were literate, and so that they're called barbarians. He was the first non-Italian to rule, Trajan, that is, yet was so popular that the Senate granted him title of Optimus, meaning he was the best. Trajan completed several major building projects, including Rome's giant chariot racing stadium, the Circus Maximus, which unfortunately no longer exists. His most important undertaking was the Forum. So here is a plan of the Forum, and let's just look at it briefly. Uh, this is where part of the library is, and here's the other side of the library. And this is where his column of Trajan is. This is the Basilica Eulipia, which is all of this here. And this would have been the courtyard. Let's see. Up here is where the market of Trajan is. And this is where you would have entered to come into this whole forum. Apollodorus and of Damascus is the architect and um, artist of this piece. And it's 106 to 112 CE in Rome, Italy. This uh, forum was funded by the spoils of war. On Rome's largest forum featured the basilica with clear story windows, two libraries, a commemorative column, and the temple of Trajan. Oh, and that would have been here on the other side of his column, the temple, which no longer exists today. Um, let me clarify. The basilica was not a church. This was a um, a place for the courts and any type of legal um, type of business that had taken place there. Okay, a larger-than-life statue of gilded bronze equestrian statue of Trajan stood at the center of the great court in front of the basilica, which, as you can see, is right here. And you can see how beautiful this was. It must have been an antiquity. And up here you can see where those uh, clear story windows are coming into, because this is the basilica right here, into the basilica. Here up here, this is where the market of Trajan is. And you can see back here is where his column is. The basilica was not a temple, as I just finished saying. It's not a church. It was a a use for government functions, such as court of law. It had grand interior that was a vast 400 feet long by 200 feet wide, which is immense. And you can see just from looking at this elevation here where the light's coming through here and light's coming through here. And that's really important because they were able to use natural lighting. They didn't have electricity. And so, you know, you can't get any light coming here from the ceiling. So, this is an important fact that they were able to use these clear story windows to bring this up so that we were able to get light coming into the interior. You can see his column is here, and then his temple would have been over on this side over there. This is an interior view of the basilica. And again, you can see the different columns. Oh, and you can take notice of here that these are Corinthian and these uh, look like they're probably Tuscan. Yeah, they might be Ionic, but it's hard to tell. And this is just a reconstructive drawing anyway. Up here is what is called coffers, which is a very important construction um, piece for roofs because in building these, they were layered, as you can see, they're and it's taking out the solid weight of the piece. And so it made the weight of using a coffer much lighter for construction. 
This is the large area, central area, was flanked by double colonnaded aisles, and light entered through the clear steering windows, through the elevated roof. You see, it must have been a very beautiful space. Here's just another plan from above. The semicircular recesses on each end of the building provided imposing settings for judges when court was in session. And so that's what we're talking about here. These are called APS, A-P-S-E, APS, which we'll get into when we get into our next unit. A series of growing vaults can have open lateral arches that form clear stories. And this is what they used in the market, which is also very important. And so you have an arch here, and then you have an arch here. And then they're intersecting here and here, which allows light to come in there, which was very important because a groin vault allows so much more open space and a lot of light into the interior. These concrete clear story windows are fireproof, which is also really important because many early buildings that had woof, roof, blah, <laughs> wood roofs burn down because if you your whole ceiling is on fire, the rest of it's going to go. Here's the market of Trajan. It's the same years, 106 to 112 CE. It's made of brick and concrete. This also was built by Apollodorus. And this is 150 spaces, both shops and administrative offices would have been in this whole market area. And you can see the interior here. So you can see the actual groin vaulting here and how much space this is creating. The invention of concrete made it possible to transform the natural slope into the multi-level complex because this is built right up on the wall. They had to, or the mountain there, they had to take down portions of the mountain to be able to build this. Each single shop was covered with a barrel vault and had a wide doorway with a window above it, which is right here. So it allowed light coming in, which again made the shops. You had to have you know light coming in, so they were able to see what was going on. And here we have an exterior view. The shops were on several levels and resembled a modern shopping mall, somewhat similar to what you know we have today, indoor market. Let's move on to the column. The column is made of marble and it's 112 CE and it's 128 feet tall. And this column celebrates Trajan's success in Dacia, which is current day Romania. Apollodorus chose to record the emperor's two military campaigns through this 625 foot frieze that winds 23 times around the column from top to bottom. So it's literally winding around the column like this in this narrative story. On the top is a statue, was in antiquity a statue of Trajan, but now it's a statue of St. Peter that was put up there in the 16th century. Let's talk about the focus on these um, these carvings, these low relief carvings. This is uh, on the it says on the emperor who appears repeatedly on the frieze. You can see he's going to be the most important person, and you can see these soldiers working, helping each other out, and of course he's probably here, Grand Central Station, right there in the middle. Moving along, we see him again, right in the center. And these are his men looking on. Here's another image of battle, and you can tell who the Romans are with the helmets and who the barbarians are with the beards and the long hair, no helmets indicating that they're barbarians. And the square base at the very bottom of the column 
was once used as a mausoleum to Trajan. So his ashes would have been stored at the base of this column. And de they were deposited in a gold urn, which uh, has since been removed. But this whole, this whole column is about imperial propaganda. And then look at us and how great and how powerful we are. So that must be your theme. I don't remember. Let me try to flip back and see if I can find it. Images of images of power, which I'm imagining was the theme. 